Um, in terms of the tutorials themselves, tutorial one, we're just running an existing suite. Um, it's designed to make you more familiar with the use of XCONF and to view output. You copy this suite um, and run it and then just look at the output from it. So you should do that now. When you've finished, uh, when it's finished running, you can take a look. Things to remember here, um, you can check the progress of the job by looking in the output of the, uh, the PE0 file and kind of warning and error messages are held in this job.air file. Uh, the next tutorial is just to kind of have a play around uh, in rows, just to make you more familiar with it. It's quite complicated. Um, it's a nameless editor, which provides some consistency checking to the choices made. Um, what is good about it is there's help text that, that will, may have some allowed ranges or values defined. Um, have a look through rows while the suite's running. Don't worry about clicking on things, you can undo things. There's a search box. Um, you can also, if you, if you take a look through the kind of names of the variables, you can also find them in the, in the files contained in your suite directory. Um, it's a very handy little tool uh, for doing these various things. So now you should work through the Exploring Rows tutorial. And when that's finished, um, things to remember here. So Rows is a nameless editor with a search function, so it should be straightforward to find the variables. You might think about case uh, there, or sometimes uh, variables have kind of missing vowels if they've been done in a shorthand. Remember, there's help text. Um, if you're unsure what you're looking for, browse through them. You know, generally speaking, the names are sensible in terms of what they are. Um, view the information on the variable, and you can see what options are available. As I say, you can undo. And you need to save the suite prior to being able to run it. Um, you don't have to FCM commit it, but you should periodically do that. Um, because if you need to backtrack, it's much easier if you've got a kind of a more current version uh, that you've committed. So the next tutorial is to do with Stash. Um, so Stash is the diagnostic system uh, in the UM. Um, and this tutorial kind of gives you an idea of the, the overview of the Stash panel and the various options. Um, in terms of making new Stash specifications, um, for how to output files, output to files. They're covered in later tutorials. Um, you're also here asked to add um, some output and check it's being done correctly. So you should work through the what is stash tutorial. So when you finish the what is stash tutorial, um, uh, from this tutorial, I hope that you have more of an understanding of what Stash can and can't do, as well as the some things uh, to try if you have problems. Remember the undo button again, um, very handy. And if you don't immediately commit changes to the repository, you can uh, you can go back to a working version. Remember to run the tidy Stash transform macro with Stash, with, with any Stash changes. Um, and you can use XConf to take a quick look at output, um, as well as converting to other formats like NetCDF. You can use Iris to look at the, the output, but so in some respects, XCOM is, is, is quicker. So the next tutorial, we actually start getting into the guts of, of using UKCA. So we're adding some new tracers. Um, this tutorial begins the process of adding in new tracers. Um, and then before we work on emissions, reaction, and depositions and diagnostics. So you had to ask to add in these two new tracers, Alice and Bob. Um, so now you should work through the uh, adding new tracers tutorial. So when you finished uh, that the little debrief, points to remember here, you need to pick your tracer slots in the UKCA code if you're adding in new ones. So have a look at the um, where those are defined. You need to edit the stash master file and add them to the row stash panel. Remember to initialize the tracers as well as output them, otherwise you might have some problems. And you need to define pressure level equivalents as well, even if you don't intend to use them straight away. And when you've done all that, you can make your UKCA changes. Um, from the UKCA changes, um, just remember that the, number of, the numbers here are a little bit complicated, um, I'm afraid. The total number of transported UKCA traces is different from the number of species that UKCA considers. So the UM side is concerned with how many traces are transported in section 34, which is the UKCA section. UKCA is concerned with how many species which are involved in the mechanism are transported. 
So how many are not? Because there are also kind of steady state species uh, that we think about. Um, and this means that the UKCA diagnostic traces, such as age of air, will appear in the stash panel, uh, but not in the UKCA species list because it's not used in the mechanism. And something like water vapor appears in the UKCA species list, but not in stash because it's not transported in section 34. Water vapor appears in section zero. Um, as the EOM outputs these traces in mass mixing ratio, but UKCA performs the chemistry in volume mixing ratio, well, actually in, in molecules per centimeter cube, you need to define the conversion factor for your new traces. So it will kind of work through these, uh, these things uh, automatically, but you need to, to input those uh, when you add the traces. So adding new emissions now, this is also a rather complicated uh, tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, you're talked about how to regrid emissions to the correct UM grid, include the correct metadata, and then save this as an NCDF file with this required metadata. Um, you are taught how to make the necessary changes to UKCA code and then make the changes to your suite to include this uh, new file. Uh, you're asked to take an emissions data set for Alice and regrid it to the M48 resolution that we're using in these training suites. Um, a similar method can be used to regrid to N96, as you might run for UK SM1. So now work through the adding new emissions tutorial. Um, so once you finish the adding new emissions tutorial, um, what we do is we start with emissions of Alice. This is at half a degree by half a degree uh, resolution. We regrid it to another resolution. This example here is for N96. Yours would look even coarser. Um, if we zoom in, we can see that the half a degree by half a degree is quite fine. But when we go to N96, it's very blocky, it's even worse at N48. Um, once you've added it in, you'll then start seeing stuff appearing within uh, the Alice tracer. Um, so at N96, this is what Alice might look like, for instance. Points to remember here, you should always regrid emissions using area weighted interpolation. Um, this ensures that you get the same mass emitted at the new resolution, um, and it's important to, to conserve that in, a, in an emissions quantity. You should always consider the correct metadata settings required for your NetCDF file. Um, and you need to define the molar mass of the species you're emitting into. And you need to make a new emissions diagnostic for your new species as well. Now we're going to think about adding new chemical reactions. Um, in this tutorial, you'll talk about the different types of reactions UKCA considers. Uh, so bimolecular, termolecular, heterogeneous, and photolysis. The format of how these are defined within a kind of single master file um, for the, the mechanism that we use in, in UKSM1. Um, and they're similar for each of these, but they're slightly different. Um, what you may find, though, is uh, if you have a re reaction that doesn't follow the standard form, you have to add special code. Um, and then you have to do that in some of the other um, UKCA routines. So in this tutorial, you're asked to add the following uh, reaction with these coefficients, and you need to make these changes in this chemistry specification module. So now you should work through the adding new reactions tutorial. So when you finish that, a little bit of a debrief. Um, now we should start seeing things appearing in Bob. So once the reaction appears, we're now able to to turn Alice into Bob. Um, so if N96, this is what Bob might look like, for instance. Um, things to remember, uh, you need to make sure that your array sizes are correct. It can be difficult to keep track um, when you're doing these sorts of things, adding new reactions, because the reaction list is, is very long. Um, now we need to think about adding dry deposition. Uh, so there are two dry deposition, dry deposition schemes in UKCA. So we have a kind of simple two-dimensional scheme. Um, and then there's an interactive parameterization, um, which deposits throughout the boundary layer, or it can deposit over the, the surface as well. Um, this 2D scheme only requires specific uh, changes to the, to the chemistry module you edited uh, in the last tutorial. Um, the interactive scheme requires changes to, um, to two other UKCA routines. Um, and you also, if you haven't done it already, uh, define the molar mass of the dry deposited species. So you've got to add in the dry deposition of Alice. Um, in this example, it deposits in the same way as CO. So there are some species which we set to deposit in the same way. This is the values for the kind of 2D scheme. 
Uh, the values of the interactive scheme, you can kind of duplicate what's done for CO in, in these two UKCA routines. Uh, so we should now add in the dry deposition of Alice. Um, so a little bit of a debrief. Um, points to remember here, even if you're using the interactive scheme, you need to make changes to the 2D scheme. UKCA expects that to be both. Um, when adding species to the interactive scheme, you need to define this molar mass. And you also need to remember that there are options in the interactive scheme for different surface types. So 9, 13, 17, and 27 at the moment. I'm afraid that these routines can be rather complex because of this. Um, um, so I do apologize for that. Now we need to think about wet deposition. Um, so there's only one scheme used for chemical species. You need to define the Henry's law coefficients. Um, you make changes just to the chemistry scheme specification module and you need to add in the wet deposition of Bob with these values. Uh, so you should work through that now. When you've finished, um, points to remember here, it's very simple. Um, the wet deposition is, is probably one of the simplest schemes so far. Um, as ever, it could be made more complex, but it, it's as it is at the moment. The next thing we're going to think about is diagnostics for all these various processes. Um, so while the stash system uh, in rows uh, provides a nice graphical user interface for requesting output, it introduces complexity within the code and in the stash master file format. So UKCA has a diagnostic system which deals with the stash handling. Um, so we can add in these new diagnostic requests relatively uh, easily in a similar way to how they're defined for the chemistry. Um, reactions and, and, and things. So this is in this file as our chemflux diags. Um, you'd actually need to edit that module unless you want to make a new type of diagnostic. What you'll be editing is in this as add flux stat module. Um, you can output the following types of diagnostics. So kind of flux through chemical reactions, flux through deposition processes, um, net chemical dynamical tendencies of traces, uh, the atmospheric mass, uh, some information about PSCs, a kind of tropospheric mask you can use for post-processing of fields and tracer concentrations, which you can mask off. So if you just wanted a tropospheric amount, for instance, generally these have a units of moles per second. Uh, to add the new diagnostic, you define it in this add flux stat module, you edit the stash master A to include the diagnostics, and then you request the diagnostic in the stash panel. Um, you can also use this diagnostic to sum diagnostics online. So if you had a load of little reactions, you wanted to just have the flux through all of them as one thing, you can add them all up. Um, but that does mean that you need to be careful so that uh, you don't accidentally send two things to the same stash code, because then they'd just be added together. So in this tutorial, I asked to output the flux through our Alice uh, plus OH goes to Bob or and Sekorg uh, reaction and the dry deposition of Alice and the wet deposition of Bob, and you output these as daily means uh, to the UPA stream. So you should work through that now. Uh, when you've finished, um, a little debrief. Um, what you then should be able to see is the actual flux. So again, uh, at N96, this is what the, the surface flux would be through that, that reaction the surface dry deposition flux, for instance, and the surface wet deposition flux for these species. Things to remember here, you need to be careful about the stash numbers you choose because we can sum them. Um, so you, you need to make sure they go to a single number if that's what you want. Um, also be a little careful picking the slots. You don't want to kind of spread them out too much in stash, try and keep things together as much as you can. So the last tutorial is the uh, aerosol tutorial. Um, so in this tutorial, we're asked to do a number of things. We're going to output some various radiation and aerosol diagnostics, um, which we'll then make use of later. Make some new time and domain profiles in Stash to consider these. We're going to post-process these diagnostics uh, using Iris uh, in Python. And then we're going to alter the experimental setup to assess the impact of this change. So now we're not forming SecOrg. Um, we're just forming Bob, which means we haven't got these links to the aerosol scheme. So this kind of gives us an idea, if you're running a full experiment, the impact of this reaction on uh, the aerosol processes. So now you should uh, work through uh, tutorial 10.
when you finished a little debrief um, so stash changes can be tricky take your time especially some of these changes here where we're adding in some rather complex uh, profiles we can use iris to read and process um data there are some simple scripts provided that do all these things take a look at them um, so you can understand what they're doing um, if you wanted to you could play a bit further and you can do some simple processing using iris quick plot um, but i'm not expecting you to do that in these tutorials 